Hello and welcome to News Click. Vice President of India Jagdeep Singh Dhankar recently issued a notice to CPIM Rajya Sabha MP John Britas over an article in the Indian Express. The article suggested that Union Home Minister Amit Shah should des desist from making disparaging remarks against any state. Following this, a complaint was lodged with Dhankar by BJP Kerala official and Dhankar acknowledged it. To talk with, uh, to talk on this, we have John Bittas with us. John sir, thank you for talking to News Click. Uh, my first question would be that uh, we saw former uh, Vice President Venkaiah Naidu praising your work in Rajya Sabha. Then this complaint and its acknowledgement by current Vice President Dhankar. How do you see the transition and uh, your comments on the complaint? me ask questions on uh, any constitutional positions. Uh, I'm glad that uh, you referred to the compliment uh, passed on by the former vice president. And I have a good working relationship with the present uh, uh, Rajya Sabha chairman also. Uh, but uh, now, as it has been widely reported, uh, I had been uh, called for a meeting with regard to a complaint uh, lodged by a BJP functionary. Uh, charging me of sedition because I wrote an article in Indian Express regarding the comments of the Honorable Home Minister of this country, uh, wherein he had uh, uh, passed uh, certain cryptic remarks against Kerala. So I feel that uh, uh, BJP is dragging uh, constitutional offices uh, into parochial politics. That is how I intend to see this uh, whole gamut of issues. You have been a journalist huh, uh, and as well as an MP. So the complaint brings us to the fact that sedition has been increasingly uh, uh, used against journalists to silence them. After this complaint, uh, how do you see the uh, colonial law and uh, I mean, what would be your case for discarding it? I am amused or rather baffled that uh, at a time when the Supreme Court is seized on this matter, when uh, these charges of sedition or rather this uh, archaic uh, colonial uh, uh, rule or uh, law is being uh, uh, misused rampantly in this country to silence uh, political opponents. And this is a juncture where uh, a BJP functionary is uh, uh, referring to this sedition uh, and uh, lodging a complaint with the uh, constitutional office of this country. Interestingly, the other day, the uh, union government had filed an affidavit saying that they are at the advanced stage of reviewing the uh, sedition provision. So, <laughs> I, have, I don't know, I mean, what is the intent of their saying that they are trying to review the, the sedition provision, whereby their own uh, political functionaries are trying to, I mean, implicate uh, political opponents by bringing this uh, very anachronistic at the same time draconian uh, provision. Uh, that is where I mean I am at a loss to understand what is the real intent of this government. Um, uh, I'm, I'm uh, directly asking you because uh, th th this law was uh, used against uh, I mean uh, independent uh, I mean uh, during the independence movement against the journalists who wrote uh, uh, against uh, British government. So. Uh, that's why I asked you why uh, why should we have a law of this kind right now in Indian democracy? We should certainly take it away from our uh, rules and regulations and laws. That's why the Honorable Supreme Court is hearing various petitions uh, and uh, naturally the Supreme Court itself has uh, passed the structures on the government wherein it has castigated castigated the government, saying that this provision is being misused rampantly. As a journalist, as, as a lawmaker, I am of the firm opinion that, see, this is detrimental to the uh, constitutional provision, detrimental to the spirit of democracy, detrimental to the uh, uh, freedom of speech and expression, and this is detrimental to the very process of democracy itself. So, it is high time that we take it out, out of our uh, bench of rules and regulations. I have no second opinion on that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, so I was going through your article, I mean, which has been, uh, you know, cited for com a complaint, cited in the complaint. 
uh, in your article you argued the case for uh, kerala being a multi religious uh, society it's celebrating its diversity and then uh, there are attacks on it so we have a new film called the kerala story and there is a concealed attack on it how would you explain this phenomeno is the remark of the honorable home minister against kerala while he was campaigning in karnataka he made a comment uh, that it was uh, absolutely unbecoming of a home minister he said that beware kerala is near you does it mean that uh, kerala is an enemy country does it mean that kerala is part of pakistan he should have relied on the indices of the central government itself saying that it's a relief that kerala is your neighbor because kerala is ahead of many states including karnataka on many of the social indices instead of comforting in, instead of telling uh, karnataka that uh, we should be happy that your neighbors like uh, kerala uh, he is making cryptic comments against kerala and even this kerala story which has been brought up uh, is of course part of the agenda to discredit kerala i have been always arguing in parliament and outside saying that if a state doesn't caves into the uh, diabolic game of the uh, ruling party you either disrupt it or defame it so you the very purpose of uh, uh, rss ideology is to make sure that the opponents are defamed and disrupted in the case just because kerala uh, is stead first against its position with regard to the bjp policies or uh, we have not given an inch of land for the bjp in this state just because of that we have been discredited left and right by the rulers in delhi even this kerala story it's a humbug absolutely ridiculous the first teaser said that 32000 girls have been reported to is and have been taken to afghanistan ridiculous now they have amended the teaser by saying that this 32000 has come down to 3 and uh, with regard to the uh, i would say the is menace i would i won't say that india is insulated from the uh, terrorist menace it is obviously we have to take care of that but we are a better off state compared to states like up or any other state like that if you look at the people who have gone to is or joined is i would say that there would be many more people who would have gone from states like uttar pradesh rather than kerala at the same time bjp is trying to uh, create a campaign wherein by kerala is being depicted as the hotbed of terrorism ridiculous humbug i would earnestly uh, urge upon the people to see this diabolic game and ensure that the agenda of bjp is defeated at any cost so this is my last question uh, i mean we are seeing uh, i mean ministers like uh, kiran rijuju uh, referring to uh, judiciary uh, and i mean the essence of it it could be understood that uh, he is ref- referring to it in a threatening manner so and i was going through your article which said about uh, which basically said that uh, the secretariat uh, positions in pap and rajya sabha and lok sabha both are being filled by central is cadre so uh, is it uh, after judiciary is it a new attack on opposition uh, through executive yeah i feel that the tentacles of executive is everywhere and uh, uh, while the media is concentrating on the inverted comma disruption of both the house of parliament uh, none of the journalists have looked at the uh, tweaking that has happened to the rajya sabha lok sabha secretariat that's why i wrote an article he said that the executive has virtually taken over the sec- independent secretariat of rajya sabha and the lok sabha even during the british period the assembly it was called assembly like that the chairman of the assembly at that time uh, i think it was brother of uh, sardar patel that is vital bhai patel he fought with the british to ensure that the secretariat of the council or the assembly is independent it has got uh, independence to ensure that it's a different pillar not being uh, integrated to the executive now what has happened that in a democracy where the parliament has to ensure that executive is accountable to it 
representatives of executive, those officers who are at the helm of the executive positions in the government secretariat are being uh, brought in to preside over Rajya Sabha Lok Sabha secretariat. I have nothing against any individual officer. But the culture of independence of both the secretariats is uh, being uh, torpedoed and this would have, uh, I would say, uh, far-reaching consequences with regard to the functioning of the uh, parliament. Thank you, John, sir. Thank you for talking to NewsClick. For rest of the news, stay connected with NewsClick.